Yo, 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 what is going on, COD Familia? It is your boy BN, aka Mr. Kingdom Builder, and today I have some interesting data to show you about the number of alliances that have and have not captured behemoths in the S2 Plus KVK groups for the Season 2 Plus. Now, there's nine divisions or KVKs that we are going to be taking a look at. However, I want to give you an overview real quick before we take a look at the data because I do think it is somewhat telling. First is, we're going to be looking at the two zone threes for S2+, Plus, which is Doolin and more Brez. Now, there's a total of five behemoths in each. You have three level four Hydras, you got one level five Necro, and then one level six Magma. What this means is that at face value, you can have five alliances from each zone three going into the final zone for zone four here in Karadek. Total, or cumulative, you could have ten alliances. Now, bear in mind, you can swap things out. For example, if you get <clears throat> one alliance here that has a level 4 Hydra as an example, they can go into the final zone, build an alliance for it in there, have all their players move in, and then you can have someone else take a level 4 Hydra, and then the pass, and then move themselves in. You could also, if your alliance is not at a 200 member cap, you could also have those players basically funnel in through that alliance, right? So they would leave their alliance uh, as an example ahead of time. Like let's say they, they, you'd have to leave your alliance 24 hours in advance before the pass opens and you would join, like let's say you joined FS if they did not have max member capacity. You'd join, you'd go in through the pass, you'd leave the alliance and then you're in zone four and then you can rejoin your alliance right and then eventually if you can or not build some flags you would at least be able to get in and participate in some pvp right and again those are just kind of two simple ways on how to go about it but today we're going to be showing you some interesting data that i'm, I'm really excited to show so let's start our, ourselves bottom up here so the columns we're going to be looking at is we have the kvk groups so what is that numbering game the kingdoms that are in each of those kvk groups or seasons slash divisions and then we have the number of zone three alliances that are in zone three right this means that they either have a pass captured because allowing for them to get in they have a little bit of territory up to a lot of territory and this is just the total this is not indicative of who's allied or who's union with who even though some of these may line up to that we're also going to be doing a separate video on what those s2 plus s2 plus matchups are going to be but you can see here for ss2-3 or ss2-2 we have in Doolin, where you have a total power of 35.3 billion in more brez you have 34.4 so this is pretty close however once you get into the alliances that currently have a behemoth captured bear in mind that these are going to be opening here i have to go all the way back to uh, my auger stone but this is going to be opening for level for the final zone in about three and a half to four days you can see we have a day left about a day left here on ember of hope unparalleled bravery is when the level five pass opens if this is two days then you're looking at three days plus the 12 hour cooldown so that's three and a half to four and a half days within that until final zone so we're coming up on it so now you have four alliances that have a behemoth captured right so that's four out of ten in total but we could argue four out of eight if you're not counting the magma ss2-3 you have 35.3 uh, billion 34 34.4 and then going into final zone right you have four alliances here in dual and two and more brez right so that's your six out of ten probably the most uh so far ss2-4 you could see 27.1 billion 25.6 so pretty close but then you get into the alliances that have a behemoth captured and it's one here in Doolin, and then three and more breaths, right? So power differentials. And again, this doesn't mean that they're always meaning that they're going to go up against each other, but just so you can kind of get a gauge of how it looks. Then we get to SS2-5. You can see 27.1 bill, 36.2, 18.9, 14.12, and then three alliances, right? So it's not that far off there. SS2-6, 30.4, 28.8. But then you see it's a little bit different. Four alliances versus two right now that have cap. Um, and then we go into SS2-7, 60.4 bill, 4.5. So you can see over one. But we know this because of the NKNW alliances that are basically kind of going up against the others, which is the BXS, the RTG, the OWL. Um, etc bdr and then you get into the zone three alliances going in and you can see it's just two right now 
that have the behemoths captured, right? No one in Morbrez, uh, again, unless Feet's going to be able to cap one. SS2 8, you can see 24.7, 25.8, pretty close there, but then you could see how it kind of varies here going now for the alliances that actually have a behemoth captured one with to at 6.2 and then two for 18.8 we get now to ss2-9 uh and then you can see you have 16.9 versus 20.5 but then no one for dueling and then two for more breaths right so milf dilf kind of going to be going up against themselves or just doing some farming right unless they end up getting someone else that's going to cap then we get to the final one which is ss2-10 and you can see that we have Zone 3, 29, 26.9, 34.7 for those zone 3s, but then you get here, and it's a little more lopsided, 18.8 for 7.7, .7, and you can see. Now, this is the interesting data that I wanted to show, which is the totals here that you can see, and I'll just kind of go here, it just shows total, right, that's it. But <clears throat> the total number of behemoths, if you're counting from each of the zones, is 10. Nine divisions, that brings us to 90. So that means you have 36 behemoths thus far that have been captured out of a total of 90, right? If I do a quick, let's just do, um, uh, or here, let's just do, we'll do this. We'll do uh, equals, or what is it? Well, let's do this. Let's do this. Dun, dun, dun. We'll do like percent or something, and then we'll do uh, 36, 90, uh, which obviously didn't do anything for me. So let's do it like this. 36, oops, hang on. Uh, we'll do some, some, let's do this, dun, dun, dun. right, 0.4, but if we turn this into a percent, I probably could have done that a different way too, but we'll just do this, where's the basic, so, right, you're looking at 40%, 36 over 90, 36, I mean, this is 50%, 36 um, times 2, it does, it does equal 72, so we know this is 50%, um, but if I go here, we could say, why, let's do it like this. So let's do 40%, oops, 40%, and then we'll go here, and we'll do 50%, right, just to kind of show that off. So what we're seeing here is that out of the total number of behemoths that have been captured, only 40% uh, of the total number of behemoths has actually been captured. And then if we look at this minus magma at the level 6, that's only half of them. So what that means, in short, is saying that there's a potential there to see more activity more power more players making it into the final zone so we can see more pvp longer lasting pvp more sustained pvp throughout the final zone which really if you think about it is the crescendo right that is the climax that you're really hoping to get to where you expect to have the most amount uh, most amount of fighting that is going to be occurring now of course there's multiple factors that are going into why in a number of kingdoms we are not going to get this or have a very low percentage chance of getting this and then in others we have a higher percentage chance of getting this so yeah i'm coming and so anyways to basically summarize this is where we're at and it, it makes me wonder when you think about the way that they've been scaling the behemoths from zone one to zone two to zone, from season one to one plus then to season two and season two plus how it uh, it appears that they that they get stronger each season, right? And obviously, for we should say factually, we know that they do. And then you have to think about, okay, well, how does this really play out, right? When you're thinking about how you view a any of these groups that you would look at, and you think to yourself, well, how? Why is it that we're not seeing more alliances getting in there? And is it because the behemoths, right? That's where the question maybe should be raised: Are the behemoths a little bit too strong, right? Are Hydra's a little bit too strong? Are the level 5 Necros a little bit too strong now in 2+, plus, right? Or is it more about how are those alliances preparing themselves, right? Are they picking favorable times? Are they trying to get their, as an example, top 40 players, right, for whatever the participant amount is? Are they looking to get the, the most amount of their strongest players there? Are they able to get all of their strongest players there? Are they picking favorable times? Are they preparing appropriately? Is everyone watching guide videos on how the behemoths move, on when they're doing their skills, and how the players should be microing and moving around? Are they doing appropriate hero pairings? Are they doing appropriate talent page setups? Are they using appropriate artifacts? I mean, a lot. all these things factor into whether or not they're going to be able to get it. But I think I will say from a community standpoint, one of the many things I've been hearing, and better yet, I really want to ask you all, because if you're in an alliance that is in Season 2+, plus, and you are someone, or if you are in an alliance and, and you have yet to grab a behemoth, and or even if you have got a behemoth, 
do you feel that the behemoths are maybe a little bit too strong? Do you think that the percentage numbers that I've shown are a little bit too low as though you feel more alliances should be able to make it into the final zone because that is potentially going to disrupt whether or not we're going to see potential fighting happening in the final zone. And then also on the other side, which you have to think about the day-to-day -day player experience and how that factors in, think about matchups that we could have seen that would have been great, but now we're not really going to be able to see those matchups or we're not going to be able to see um, matchups that are as balanced as they could have been if those alliances were able to make it into the final zone and that that now is going to potentially tip the scale going into the final zone for some of those kingdoms. And will alliances or unions that are a little more at a disadvantage, will they even fight? Will they barely fight? Will they, will they fight at all? These are then the kind of uh, trailings, if you will, right? The after effects of what I'm sure we're going to see, right? I mean, I think kingdoms like SS2-3, where we have the TFS no war, I think they're going to fight their hearts out, right? Without a doubt in my mind. I think the kingdoms where we have uh, the EIS, the VVV, the tribes, the SK1, the twos, I think they're going to fight. I think the NKNW kingdoms, right? I think they'll fight as long as they can going up against them. You know, maybe as long as feet can grab uh, a Hydra going into their group, I think there's good opportunity that we'll see some fighting. Who knows how much it'll be? So I think there are some KV, I think there are some groups that we're going to see some PVP from, uh, regardless of what happens, right? They'll be out there fighting. But it does beg the question, and that's why, again, I'm, I, I'd love to know, do you guys think that, that the Behemoths and S2 Plus are a little bit too strong because, because of what we're seeing so far? And bear in mind, we still have a few days left to go, so we'll see if more alliances are able to capture more Behemoths to where we can get, hopefully, more balanced fights where alliances are just closer in power, which, again, as we know, usually will increase the likelihood that players are more willing to engage because now they're not viewing things as being completely lopsided but a little bit more a little bit fairer if you will right and that typically uh, will increase motivation uh, to go out there and fight more so than if the powers are more again uh, wide if you will in their gaps but with that in mind i'm going to pass the question off to you guys let me know what you think and again whether it's Behemoths might be too strong. How do you think this is going to affect some kingdoms if they don't get favorable matchups? If some other alliances don't even go in, like we saw in the situation with the MILF and DILF alliances, where they're the only ones right now that have capped. So what happens if no one else caps in their kingdom and it's just going to be those two going in? You know, how how would you feel if you're a part of those alliances and you're not going to get a matchup going into the final zone? Because again, I, I, I view it the same way. Just because you're able to cap and you're able to get in there, I feel like that has to be incredibly demotivating. Uh, and very disengaging for alliances that are able to make it in, but they're not able to get any opponents going in, even though there could have been opponents going in, just if they were able to capture the behemoths, but maybe they weren't because they were too strong, or maybe there was other factors that went into it. So again, there's a lot I'm throwing at you, uh, but I just found this to be fascinating, right? Given that we're about three and a half to four and a half days until the final zone opens, which I can't wait to see a lot of the PvP coming from some of the kingdoms, at least that we know of thus far. So let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. That's going to be it for me. As always, until next time, I'll catch you all later.